Does your KLR 650 burn oil like mine? Does it magically not burn oil and you want to keep it from doing so? I watch my temperature gauge go up and down all day long. I have to add oil every few gas fill ups. In your engine, your cylinder expands and contracts with the fluctuating temperature. And over time, that makes it add around and it just starts burning oil. As your bike gets older, it's going to start pumping out blue smoke at the end of its life. So let's get started. So for tools, you're just going to need basic hand tools. Um, ideally, you're going to want quarter inch socket sets with a quarter inch ratchet because it can get into the tightest places. You'll need eight millimeter and some smaller ones with the smaller hose clamps. If you have to, this will probably work with three eighths ratchet, three eighths socket set. Make sure you have enough small socket sets so you can get those small hose clamps. You'll need, you know, Phillips head, flathead screwdrivers, something to cut the hose with. There is metal in the hose, so it needs to be something hefty. When you do the temperature gauge overlay, ideally, if you can get your hands on a ratcheting screwdriver ratchet, that works best. If you don't have one of these, they're pretty cheap. But if you don't have one, you can take vice grips that will lock onto there pretty good and you can get in there because it's pretty tight. If you don't have ratchets and socket sets, you may be able to get away with one of these. This is pretty cheap. I've had this thing for years. It has metric and standard wrenches on it and they get pretty big. For some of the coolant hoses, you can get a set of these of four different kinds for like $4 at Harbor Freight. That's where I've got these. This is a couple years old. And if you don't have one of these, but for some reason have access to an actual hose remover tool, that works even better. You also need a marker or something to mark your measurements on the hose. And it's always good to have an extension or two around just in case. If you choose to get the temperature gauge overlay, you will also need a number one Phillips head screwdriver for the very small screws inside the dash. The kit works for all KLR 650s. I've seen some videos about people doing some unnecessary stuff. All I've done is take off the fender on the side. I've heard of people taking off the gas tank, the seat, and just from what I can see, it doesn't look necessary. So I'm just gonna do it my way and we'll find out if you can still do it. You also have to remove the skid plate so that your coolant can drain. Here we are with the dashboard of your bike, right down there. This is a radiator cap, this guy right here. Turn that and take a little bit of finagle in, but you gotta, once it gets loose, you have to push it in and keep turning it to the left. Then air can get in so that the coolant can drain. This little nub right here, you'll see it on your bike. You open that up and the coolant will drain. Make sure it's cold. You don't want to be touching hot coolant. It's a speck of like five foot pounds or something like that, but like once you feel it like all the way in, just give it a quick little little tug and it should be fine. So in here, this is where the new Thermobob 2 is gonna go. Now, a lot of people remove this so that they can get to the bolts easier and so people can get a torque wrench in there. My ratchet and socket fit in there just fine. Loosen this hose clamp right here. I also didn't put my bike on a jack stand or anything. It's just on a kickstand because, again, just be careful. But you shouldn't you shouldn't need to take it up on a jack stand. And then this is going to be probably pretty stuck on there. But as long as you have the hose clamp loosened, you're just going to have to finagle it a little bit. It's usually twisting it helps break the seal a little bit. Should be able to just. Pop it out and make sure you pull out your old thermostat, which honestly I don't think was doing jack. So here's how this thing's gonna work. Here's your new Thermobob 2. Looks fucking great. Um, it's gonna sit in there a little cockeyed like that. That's normal. Take the thermostat, spring going in, press it in there like that, and make sure you get these uh, spaces lined up right. It's gonna, it looks just like that in the picture. And these guys are on the side, these little spaces here. So that's gonna go in there. This gasket is on here for when these two mating surfaces go together. And then they supply you with this gasket that goes between the new housing and the head. You just push that in there. This guy goes on and then this goes on. It's gonna sit, it's gonna be sitting there kind of like that. So not taking out the gas tank has proven to make getting these in a little bit longer a process, but 
Um, it's not really a big deal, so it's more of a personal preference thing. Now that the Thermobob 2 has been installed, we need to make uh, a cut into this hose and install um, the T-fitting. And this is the same hose that reaches over here and goes into the bottom of the radiator on the other side. From this side, you can see the hose. It's right here. It's right next to the sensor that you will also see. Oh yeah, she's on there. If you're having trouble getting these off, a lot of times if you have a little pick, you can snake it in there and break that seal loose. Just make sure it's not a sharp pick so that you don't damage anything. So basically you just kind of pressing against the metal a little bit, get it slide under there and just kind of move it around. Get that seal broken up a little bit, just like that. And then sometimes you can use it to drag it down. As long as you're careful and you don't use a sharp one, it should be all right. So now that we're back here, we lost just a little bit of blood. Loosen this up. This one's a little more accessible, so it should be that much easier to take off. Those are famous last words. Oh, come up pretty easy. Now remember how this thing went through, okay? It went underneath the other hose over to where it's supposed to be, not over. So the instructions that you can get for this um, are actually very clear and tells you the exact measurements um, on where to cut and the point, of the point of tangency is where this bend stops and it becomes straight again. Measure quarter inch or three quarter inch past that and then you make, um, you cut out five eighths of an inch out of the hose for the T connector. So I got it roughly at the point of tangency. I'm gonna do three quarter mark with my black marker on this black hose. Five eighths from that point that's what I'm cutting out for this piece to fit in here. And that 5 8 section I'm cutting out makes sense because if you look at that, it actually fits perfectly in there. So that's, I think it's actually gonna be uh, sitting like that. There's probably a better tool than this, but this is what I have and I'm gonna be super, super careful. So just kinda, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little incision point right there. No going back now. Follow my line all the way around. And it's okay if it's not perfect because there is a, a quite a large lip on the T-fitting and you're gonna have a hose clamp on there anyways. So it's really, um, you know, obviously you're gonna wanna get it as close as you can, but don't, don't beat yourself up if it's not like a perfectly flat, you know, flat surface. I mean, look at that, that's pretty good, especially for dikes. Uh, I could probably clean this one up a little bit. Before I start trimming it back, I'm gonna put it together to make sure uh, it all is all good. You can see, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's gonna be on there. This is where, how far those things stick out and those hose clamps that they provide for you are gonna sit right there and create a nice seal because it's got a lip on there. So don't worry too much. As you can see in this picture, slightly over that way with this thing like that close enough again it doesn't have to be you know 36.5 degrees off from center you know just for just to make it look nice let's get these hose clamps going the same way all right how are we looking here oh fuck. i think i'm going to make sure these hose clamps are facing down because if you look in your bike, you're gonna find that um, accessing these from the bottom is gonna be just a little bit easier. So that's how it's gonna sit like that. Like the Germans say, good and tight. That's all it takes. Remember, have that facing an accessible direction. start to feel resistance just cinch it down looks nice and tight but not too tight 
now we're connecting that spot to that spot. Make sure, get these on there. And again, always be thinking about where these are gonna be most accessible once they're on there. Just kind of wiggle it. And when it's in there, make sure it's right up against the fitting. Now we're just gonna slide this guy. So now you'll see it's right up against the fitting. And this little guy is exposed. Now these ones are smaller, so you don't need to tighten them down quite as tight as the other ones. Alrighty, look at that. Looking good, I think. Always good to double check this shit. Now that everything's in there, it'll refill your cooling system. You're gonna wanna get yourself a nice long funnel because they really do not put this in the most accessible location. Perhaps turn the wheel a little bit. Handlebars, sorry. I'm usually a car mechanic. You'll see it bubbling too. Well, I'm not gonna stand here forever. Um, these bikes do have an overflow container. And so basically once you get that chopped off as much as it's gonna go, you can fill up your coolant overflow container and basically the system will bleed itself as the thermostat opens and closes. Just kind of keep an eye on that for the next couple of days and I'll show you how to fill that. So right here is your coolant overflow container. It says full low and you're just gonna fill that up to somewhere probably closer to the full mark. And then maybe after like literally one ride of it warming up and running, this should probably be going down a little bit, which is normal. And then uh, you'll notice it just kind of stop changing and you'll just kind of, you'll be good. It'll be somewhere in there. I'm already low, so I need to top it up anyways. Now, if this was your car, I'd say go ahead and get some coolant specifically for your vehicle. But with this being a motorcycle and it takes like 30 something ounces of coolant, I think just some good old AutoZone antifreeze and coolant 50 50 is going to be perfectly fine some people use distilled water but i wouldn't risk that if you live in anywhere that has a winter and this stuff should work just fine so it doesn't take much check here i'm actually a little bit over full but not by much and by the time this thing bleeds the air out a little bit it should come down and we'll be a-okay now your klr should have four screws holding in this windshield there is a piece in the back, so make sure you don't lose that into your bike. There's three screws holding in your whole dashboard here. Even right here, it's pinching against this piece. So it's already too tight even with this. But once you get it past a certain point, you can get this out of there and then you can get the rest by hand. Now you're gonna have this cable here coming from your wheel, which is your speedometer. You can remove it, but it's not required. And then we'll use the number one Phillips head screwdriver to access the overlay on the temperature gauge. And you have to use this on six screws to take out the dash from the dashboard panel. Why they can't use the same for the whole bike is a mystery. Now that your naked dashboard is exposed, I'd make sure your hands are clean so you don't contaminate anything in here and just keep it nice and clean. So what you're gonna do is this overlay is a piece of plastic that you unscrew these screws and then you feed it through the hole, through that onto there and you just screw it right in place. Try to get them lined up so it's correlating with the dash marks. But that's about it. And then you just put it back together. Now that this is back together as one piece, you gotta insert these dowels into their bushings here. Same thing, doesn't take a lot of pressure. Now when you're tightening these, 
this is the bushing. And so as you squeeze this in there and tighten it and tighten it, you're actually gonna be compressing the rubber. So you're gonna feel that. And so you don't need to wind it down until it absolutely stops. Just enough so that it feels solid and this thing doesn't move around a whole lot. Once everything is installed and you start driving it, your temperature gauge is gonna stay at about 185, 190. This is because your new thermostat has a rating of about 185, 190 degrees Fahrenheit, while the original one has about 156 degrees Fahrenheit rating. And so this new thermostat opens up a little bit hotter, which is good because when you come to a stop, it comes up to about 200. And so don't be alarmed if it still seems kind of low. That's all it takes. And when you start driving it, Keep an eye out around the hose connections. Just make sure the coolant isn't leaking. And keep an eye on your coolant level in here. And that's about it. Good luck.